What's up, what's up? Sunday night check in. Let's see who's the first person on. What's up, what's up? Sunday night check in. Official MRY. I see J Productions Music, which is Josh, Marcia, Dr. Cecilia. Hey, Aletta. Hey, Micah. Hey, Maisha. Oh, there's KD, KD Hudson. What's going on? Miss New You, Jamie Wright, Speaker Hey Sis. What's going on? I love you too, Josh. I love you too. What's going on? Oh, I have Unchained. Are oh, we hopping on tonight? I have not been on in a few days. I've been trying to get on every night. And every night I get um distraction, distracted. Hey Tanya, hello, hey Tanya, how are you? Um Yes, long time no see. <laughs> That's hilarious. Rolanda, Rolanda, come on in, come on in. Hope you all are well. This is Sunday Night Check-In, and we are on what? Day seven of our fast. Is it day seven? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I've been meaning to check in on y'all. Um, hey, Elder Scruggs. We're going to see what the Lord says. Thank you. Thank you. There's my cousin, Norris Network, my brother, Brother MacArthur Glaze. Oh, it's going to be a night tonight. Miss Ohio Realtor, how are you doing? How are you doing? Praying that you are selling that real estate. How are you doing, Unchained? It's been a moment, but it is good to see you on. Hope all is well. Hey, Miss Keena Lene and Miss Kimberly um, Morrow. Listen, it's a good day. I don't know if it's been a good day for you, but it's been a good day. A, a sleepy day, but a good day. Um, we were um, had quite a few errands that we ran on yesterday, and so we had a late night and an early morning for church, and so it made it a sleepy day. But nonetheless, it is a great day. Hey, Brother Anthony. And so you all know how we do. We just kind of flow and see what the Spirit of the Lord is going to say. I thought my computer was charged. It's not. Do I have a charger down here with me? I don't. It's okay. Um, hope all is well, Elder Scruggs. We've been praying for you. Uh, hey, Tiki. How are you? How are you? It is good to see you. Hope all is well. How is your sister doing? Listen. Today is Jan January 15th. Let me start by saying today is the official birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We will uh, celebrate it, you know, as a country. The holiday will be acknowledged tomorrow. Hey, Trend, and hey, walk away, Renee. But also today is my mother's birthday. And so for all of you that know that my mother, who is always near and dear to my heart, uh, is no longer with us here on earth. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Sharon. Um, hey, Angel. Today is her birthday, and I call her the blueprint. Today is the day, the blueprint, the standard, the pattern. Uh, today is the day the blueprint and the pattern was born. And so, you know, um, this, is, this is where I guess we'll just start. You know, back in the day, I used to dread sometimes her birthdays. And over time, really, when I began to walk out my full call and kind of step into her, her shoes, if you will, step into her footsteps, begin to walk in the mantle that she left here on this earth. Once I began to do that, um, the, sa the sadness and the heartache uh, began to dissipate. And I began to more appreciate and value the deposit of what she made in me. Hey, Tiki Factor. Hey, Candice. Um, hey, Nicole. And so today is a day I, I wasn't sad. Uh, I, I haven't, you know, even thought to be sad. Today is a day when greatness was born. My mother being one of the greats born on today and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This is his actual birthday. Thank you all for her um, saying happy heavenly birthday to her. Hey, Shia. And so we'll just start there. You know, um, 
how do what do I how do I start? This this last week has been a biz, busy week. I miss you too, Shy, and I need to see your face. I'm gonna have to come see you. I see. Uh, hey Hannah, hey Clanisha. Yes, Unchained, she is the blueprint. When my mother set a high standard, she was a great example. And so my sister and I are both walking out and walking out in ministry. My sister is actually a math teacher the way my mother was a math teacher. So she even followed in her footsteps in that area. And so, uh, yeah, today is her, was, is her birthday. It's a good day. Um, and it's a day that I am uh, grateful to also to be alive. Yes, Freddie, Josh is doing good. I will tell him that you ask about him. Hey, Jolly. And so I am hopping on. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for the badge. I am hopping on. Uh, you know, I thought my computer was working because I kind of want to talk a little bit about. Um, and no one's down here to go get my computer charger. I, I kind of wanted to walk through a little bit of some of uh, the scriptures uh, in the book of Joshua again. And since my computer is not charged, we will do that on another day this week. I do want to on Thursday evening, I think that's the 19th. Can somebody double check that? Uh, the 19th where the conclusion of the fast, I would like us uh, to come together in prayer. And I don't know if that will be here online or if I will just put a free uh, Zoom link, which yes, of course is free, a link for Zoom in my, um, in my bio and let you log in and we have prayer kind of in a more intimate way and you being able to give us prayer requests and all of that. But I think the 19th is Thursday. Somebody double check me and let me know if the 19th, which is the last day of our fast. If those of you who have not been fasting and want to join us, uh, listen, just join us. Join us on the last few days. We are partaking, most of us, in the Daniel fast. But if not the Daniel fast, then we are fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. with no, um, no, no, no food. Uh, and you eat whatever you want after. Uh, Dr. Monique, I wanted to go over a little bit again over chapter five and some of um, chapter six, but I don't have it with me, so I won't, I won't, I won't. We'll take another route. Uh, but I do want us to culminate this fast in prayer. He, he said, go get the cord. <laughs> My brother would tell me that, to go get the cord. Um, so yes, Thursday is the last day of the fast. And so we will, um, I want to come together in prayer. I want you to send your prayer request. I'm believing God for him to do great and mighty things in your life. But this fast, if you remember, we were fasting only 10 days, according to the book of Daniel, uh, chapter one. And if you, in your reading, if you haven't, I would just suggest to you that you read the book of, uh, Daniel chapter one, Daniel chapter one. Um, and just, it's the first time the Daniel fast is really introduced. Uh, I know most people talk, call the Daniel fast the 21 day fast, but actually the first time that Daniel says, test me for 10 is, is for 10 days. That he says, test me, prove us uh, for these 10 days. And so uh, we are fasting and we are believing God to do for us, for me, for you, for your family, for your children, what he did for Daniel and for what he did for the three Hebrew boys. The Bible says after the 10 days that, that they were 10 times better than those that were also, if you will, uh, going for the same jobs or same um, positions. Remember, they were in Babylonian cap cap captivity. And in captivity, they had chosen the, the best, the brightest, the smartest, uh, the, the, the best of them to, to utilize. And it was Daniel and three Hebrew boys. And Daniel refused to eat the, the king's food. Hey, shine bright like a diamond. Uh, and so... In that, at the, at the end of 10 days, they found them all to be better, smarter. Pastor V is asleep. <laughs> she said somebody text Pastor V for the court. He is asleep. And so I just, I, I want to commend you. Uh, hey, Diane, I want to commend you for going on the fast, for setting aside this time. We don't fast just because 
everybody else is fasting at the beginning of the year. I do understand why people fast at the beginning of the year. They're offering up the first fruit of the year. They're offering up the, the beginning of the year and they are setting a precedent or an order for how their year will go. So I understand that. But in December, I clearly heard the Lord tell me, don't go on a 21 day fast. Don't go on a 40 day fast. Fast according to Daniel chapter one. I'm going to bless my people. I'm going to cause favor to be up on them. I'm going to cause them to shine. Their gift is going to make room for them and bring them for, before great men. I'm going to cause somebody who has been overlooked to be uh, become visible in the things that they are already doing. See, this is not magic. This is not a uh, hocus pocus, but this is the things that you have already been committed to, the things that you have already been diligent about. Untrained, I just pray that the Lord will cause your business to increase 10 times more and have 10 times more visibility and that the Lord will open up doors for you that no man can shut and that the Lord will begin to speak through you as a pen of a ready writer. And as he does, that your confidence and your courage will build, be built not just to create business, but to go forth and to be a, 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 a different type of a prophet, not a prophet that may be sits in a pulpit all the time, but that is a prophet that is going out into the highways and into the byways and that you're compelling men to come to Christ and that you are going forth and that when you open up your mouth to speak, that people will not allow your words to just fall on deaf, deaf ears, but they will listen to you. They will hear what God is saying through you and there will be a tangible result of to verify, thank you, Lord, that's how I hear it, a tangible manifestation, that's it, thank you, Lord, a tangible manifestation that the word God is speaking through you is him, that it is not you, but that it is coming from him. Hallelujah. And if you believe that word is for you, just grab it. Just reach up and just grab it. Receive it by faith. The Bible says, believe you have received that which you have prayed for. I know you've been praying. I know you've been fasting. I know you've been consecrating. I know you've been doing all of these things. And listen, I believe that we're getting ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Listen, I feel something turning. I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't planning to go this fast. I wanted to kind of talk you know, at a, at a little smooth rhythm, I, I got to pull myself back, but it, it's been a lot happening over these last few, um, this last week. It's been a lot of sickness, a lot of phone calls for people who have been sick and had to be rushed to the hospital in emergency situations. And I'm telling you, we have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There have been two phone calls I know where people had to be rushed to the hospital. They were put in ICU and we began to pray the prayer of faith. And it's not that it's me, but really it's that when someone calls and say, hey, Elder Diamonds, can you pray with me? It's really that we're praying together. It's really that we're touching and agreeing. And the Bible says, if any two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And so God has been showing himself strong and mighty. He has been showing himself to be faithful. When I received a text message today from somebody who was in the hospital yesterday on a ventilator yesterday, and they were very concerned and they thought going in that it wasn't looking well. Today, this person is off the ventilator. The person is, 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 is cognizant. They're awake. They're aware. God is faithful. Yes, Jamie, Sister Jamie, I have not heard Bishop's sermon today because I was with my husband in the youth ministry, but I have heard so many people say, go listen to Bishop Jake's message. And so even for those of y'all that are on here, I, I, I don't really always say who my pastor is because I don't want people to think that I am name dropping, even though it is a fact that I have been attending this church over 22 years, but they said he really preached the word today. And so I want you, if, uh, when you get off tonight, to go on and go on to T.D. Jake's official on YouTube and watch the sermon from today. But we have been seeing miracles. I'm just going to start talking how I sense it. About a year, almost two years ago, uh, we began praying every night at midnight. Uh, I heard Brother Glaze, they say the glory failed. They say the glory failed. 
uh, about a couple of years ago, about two years ago, we began praying every night at midnight. And I know I said this to you all maybe about eight months or a year ago, and people began to send prayer requests, and we would pray for whoever would ask us to add them to the prayer list. But I want you to, I want, I want to tell y'all something. Sometimes when you're in a season of prayer, and this is just how I, want, I feel led to share right now. Sometimes when you've been consistent in the thing, you've been diligent in the thing, and we've had a prayer list with over 50 names on it, and we're praying and calling these names every night. We're calling, we have a young, a group of young men that we pray for. We call their names every night. And um, sometimes it will look like, I don't know who this is for, but sometimes it will look like the prayers that you pray for everybody else is coming to pass, but the answers to your personal prayers are bypassing you. I'm going to say it again. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that that sometimes it seems like you pray for somebody else and God gives them a miracle. You pray for somebody else and God gives them a breakthrough. We begin to pray for women who had not been able to conceive and have children. And, and I think it was about five women on the list. And now two of them, one of them is already given birth. One of them is now uh, far along in her pregnancy. And, and they are sure that even if she has, you know, if she has a baby now that she will go ahead and birth a healthy baby. And so we see the Lord answering prayer. But I want to talk to you specifically about not growing weary in well-doing. Listen, I am seeing God answer my personal prayers. I am seeing the goodness of the Lord show up in my own house. I am seeing deliverance and breakthrough in my own family. And I don't want you to give up because, you know, sometimes I would, I would feel a little weary, grow weary. And I would say, Lord, I feel like you have me praying for my family and all these other people and you're answering their prayers. Lord, I promise you, if you answer my prayer, I'll keep praying for them. I felt like God was was not answering mine or that my answer was delayed for a season so that it would keep me in a posture of prayer. But listen, I'm telling you, we have crossed over. And that's why I really wanted to go to that book of Joshua, but I'll give it to you later this week because last week at Closing the Gap, I preached after the crossover and after the crossover in the book of Joshua chapter five, the first thing that they did when they crossed over into the promised land was that they had to circumcise the young men. They had to break covenant with God. They, they broke covenant with God. And I talked about this last week, I believe they broke covenant with God. Then you go on a few more verses and it says that they, they honored the Passover. They took the Passover in remembrance of the Passover when the death angel had passed over the children of Israel. And the Bible says that as soon as they finished with the Passover, the next day, the manna ceased. I want you to just sit here for a moment. I'm in the book of Joshua chapter five. If you need to go back and read this for your hearing, the Bible says the manna ceased. I don't know if all of you know what the manna is, but when the children of Israel or the, uh, when the children of Israel left uh, Egypt and that they walked through the Red Sea and they were in the wilderness, God fed them manna from heaven every day. Manna would fall from heaven. Uh, he would feed them much like when the Lord pr Lord's prayer says, give us this day, our daily bread. I pray that often. Give me a daily bread, God, a daily bread, not yesterday's bread, not tomorrow's bread, but a daily bread. And while the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness, they were fed by manna. I got to slow down because I want somebody to get this who doesn't know the full story. Oh, there's my sis, Prophetess Kelly Cruz. Um, I want somebody to get the full story, so I want to slow it down. The original children of Israel who left Egypt went through on dry land in the Red Sea and wandered in the wilderness. Uh, because of their disobedience, God killed everybody or allowed everyone to die out. I won't say he killed them. He allowed everyone to die over the age of 20 before they entered the promised land. So that by the time Joshua is leading the children of Israel, everybody he is leading is those that God allowed to live that were 20 and under. Now, Joshua himself was older, 
Because remember, Joshua was one of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, that um, Moses sent out to spy out the promised land. So here it is. I want to establish that because it's important to know. Oftentimes, because the Joshua generation is younger, we assume that their leader was young. But their leader was not young. He was old enough to have walked with Moses. He was old enough to have come over and seen the promised land as a spy. He was old enough to have walked with Moses and to receive the mantle uh, of Moses. Yet, God preserved him and Caleb when all the others in his age group died out in the wilderness. I'm going slow for a moment so we can paint the picture. When, while in the wilderness, and the children of Israel were crying out, uh, saying, Moses, you got us out here. We don't have any food. We need to go back. I, they, they start uh, desiring the foods of their slave masters. They start desiring the, the, the food that they had had in Egypt because they felt like, what, what's going on? We don't have any provision out here. Moses, you brought us out here to die. And God answered them and began to feed them daily manna. When I was preaching last Saturday at Closing the Gap, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks that the generation that Joshua carried over through the Jordan River was a generation that had been raised on manna. They were a generation that all of their food had dropped from the sky daily and God himself was feeding them. They were not a generation that had to work for anything to eat. They were not a generation that had to toil the ground to eat. Manna fell from heaven for this generation on their way to the promised land. I just want you to think about that. Their fathers had memory of a diet before manna. But their only memory of a diet is manna because they were born in the wilderness on the way to the promised land. Now, I want you to listen to this. The reason I'm sick saying that is as soon as they cross over the Jordan River, the Lord tells Joshua to circumcise all of the young men. Now, it is the custom of that day that children were circumcised at eight years old. But for whatever reason, their fathers, their parents did not make sure that the children that they birthed in the wilderness were circumcised. So here God has to tell Joshua, before you go over, yes, you've crossed over and you're in the land. Your foot is physically in the promised land. But before you can conquer Jericho, I need you to go back and circumcise the young men because that is a sign of my covenant. So they circumcised them. And the Bible says they had to rest for a few days until they were made whole. Then they had and they partook of the Passover meal in honor of the death angel passing over uh, the children who were still in Egypt and not killing them. They partook of this meal. And the Bible says the next day the manna ceased. I'm not even really trying to be churchy or cliche, but in order to possess your Jericho. See, the thing about the promised land is this. It has been promised to you, but you have to possess it. The promised land has been prophesied to you, but you have to possess it. The promised land is yours. But there is still an action required of you for you to lay hold of the promises. What the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, that the promises of God are yes and amen. And I want to say this. I'm going to say this again. This is not magic. Prophecy is not magic. Prophecy is not witchcraft. Prophecy is hearing from the Lord. And when the Lord has given a word and has decreed something over your life, it shall come to pass. But it's still he requires something of you. So before they fight Jericho, the Lord had to change 
their diet. He no longer fed them every day. He no longer provided their meals every day. He now has put them in a position, not just to go and possess the land, but now they've got to even provide for themselves. This promised land that God has promised you, listen, some of you have prophecies over your life that has never come to pass. Some of you have prophecies that have been spoken over you 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You've forgotten about them because they never came to pass. But I came tonight to tell you that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, he shall perform it. But the problem is not God. The problem is you. And in order to have the courage and to have the strength and to have the fortitude that it's going to take for you to bring in this harvest, because the harvest is here. I need you to understand right now, there is a famous, famous writer, Charles Dickens. If you're in America, you know we read uh, Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities, growing up in school in my generation. I don't know if they're still reading that, that story. But that story starts off saying it was the best of times and the worst of times at the same times. That is the current condition in which we live. Everything that, that they are forecasting that is going to happen in this world that has a negative connotation is going to come to pass. However, if you are under the blood, if you are a believer, if you are in covenant with God, that's why they started with covenant. If you are in a covenant relationship with God, it doesn't matter what happens in this world. It doesn't matter about a recession. It doesn't matter about who, who's in office. It doesn't matter. All these things that they are using for fear mongering. It doesn't matter about vaccinated or non-vaccinated. It doesn't matter that the death toll of COVID in, in right now in China is, 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 is uh, accelerated and increasing every day. It doesn't matter. If you are under the blood, if you're under the blood of Jesus, if you are in position and covenant with God, it will be the best of times and the worst of times all at the same time. What, what that really means is you will see the world experience the worst of times and you will be standing receiving the best of times. I'm really trying to pull myself back because I want you to really go back and read Joshua chapter five um, because that promised land is yours. But again, God requires something of you for you to possess it. So the first thing they did when they crossed over the Jordan River, after they experienced the miraculous power of God and they saw that they could walk over on dry land. And then they saw that the water went back and covered back once they were out of the out of off the dry land and went back into the river. The first thing they did was circumcise. Doing this fast, what we are doing is cutting away our flesh circumcision, which is normally done on little boys when they're born, it is really the cutting way of the foreskin. And I'm not a man, so I'm going to tell you what I've heard men say. It is cutting away skin or flesh that's not useful. There is no purpose for it. There is no uh, medical need for it. There is no physical need for it. So it is cut away. And I'm giving you that example because that is what is required of you in this season. To cut away the parts of your flesh that are not useful for the kingdom. To cut away the parts of your flesh that are not useful. They're not providing uh, a substance. They're not, they're not useful for what God has called you to do. To cut away the parts of your flesh. The parts of your flesh that are no use to God. That's our first, that's what we're doing on this fast. We have a few more days through, through, not, through the 19th. We are cutting away our flesh. We're cutting away the parts of us 
that's preventing the Holy Spirit from having his way in our life. We're cutting away the parts of us, our idiosyncrasies. Some of them are not sins. They are idiosyncrasies. They are things about us that are what the Bible would call a weight that are weighing you down, cutting away, cutting away bitterness, cutting away anger, whatever it is that is in your flesh, that is part of your carnal man, your carnal man, you can see it, you can touch it, you can smell it, you can hear it, everything in your five senses. We are cutting it away. And the thing about this is, is you have to cut your own self. You have to cut your own self. The apostle Paul said it this way, that he buffeted his flesh. So while we're on this fast, I'm going to say this, this may confuse you. We'll go back up in a minute. We'll go back high in a minute, but this may confuse you when I say this. We're not fasting for a miracle. We're not fasting for you to be healed. We're not fasting for you to have a breakthrough. I want you to know the breakthrough is already yours. The healing is already yours. Jesus already paid for it. I'm, I don't have to fast and work for that which Jesus has already done. Jesus has already provided peace. He's already provided healing. He's already provided deliverance. He's already provided financial breakthrough. He's already given you a gift and a talent, something that you have to cultivate. He's already given you the power to get wealth. Whatever it is that you are needing and that you are lacking is whole and complete in Jesus. This fast is for us. This fast is so that we will be able to maintain this harvest that God is sending our way. This fast is that we'll kill the part of us that won't allow us to be prideful when God comes and gives you the breakthrough that you've been standing on his promises and believing him for. We're fasting that it's killing this flesh, that we will partner with the prophecy. That's what I like to say, that we're partnering with the prophecy, that our life is not being lived in a way that is fighting against that which God is wanting to do. I want to say that again so that you can get it. I'm going to say it again so that you can get it. You want to live your life in a way that is not fighting against what God wants to do in your life. I want you to just think about that because many people we're, we're hooked on prophecies. We get, we get intoxicated almost on prophecies. We want a prophetic word and I get it. Prophetic words have their place. But you are believing God for something that you have not built an infrastructure on the inside of you that when he releases it, that you're able to maintain it. That's it, Kim, that you're able to maintain it. You're building you. While everybody is telling you to build a business, they're telling you to build a ministry, they're telling you to build all these things, what we're doing in this fast is we're building us. We're building us. And so when they crossed over, the first thing they had to do was circumcise themselves, cut away the flesh that wasn't even necessary. What they were doing was establishing the covenant between them and God. The next thing was they took the Passover su supper and the next day the manna ceased. So they went from circumcising themselves to now having to provide for themselves. Because the provision was falling. The provision was falling. That's how God does you when you're, you're a baby Christian. Every prayer you pray, he answered it, he answers it immediately. But the provision ceased. And now you have to go back to getting your food from the land. The, the thing that happens at the end of that chapter 5 and I was really going to teach on chapter six tonight, but we will do that later this week. The thing that happens at the end of chapter five 
is Joshua sees a man and he runs over to this man and he basically draws his sword and says, whose side are you on? And, and the man says to him, he says, are you on our side or their side? He said, neither. I'm on the Lord's side. And Joshua, the Bible says, immediately falls down. He says, take off your shoes. He takes off his shoes. And the Bible says he worshiped. I, I just don't know. I know that doesn't sound deep. But I got a revelation differently when I when I paid attention to that. There are y'all have heard me for those of you who have followed me for a while. We have taught on worship. Uh, we taught on worship, I believe, in the month of November at Closing the Gap. We have talked about worship, that worship is not a slow song. Worship is not a sad feeling. That worship actually can occur without any music. That the first time worship is mentioned in the Bible in the King James Version, it was when Abraham was getting ready to offer up his son. And God had asked him to kill his only son, Isaac. And he says to his servants, stay here. Me and the lad are going yonder to worship. What God calls sacrifice, Abraham called worship. And worship is not worship if there is no sacrifice. Worship is about the worship of God. It is only a, a, a appropriate that when the angel of the Lord stands, that Joshua falls down to his knees and he worships. But I want you to really talk to you about this worship from a different perspective. Because in the book of Genesis chapter 22, when Abraham says that he and the lad are going yonder to worship and they go up and they're going up and he now has his son Isaac laid out to offer him up as a sacrifice or he has laid him out in an act of worship. There's a voice that comes from heaven that says, Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand. Don't kill your son. I'm paraphrasing. Look over there in the, look over yonder. And there was a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham names this place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. The Lord will provide. I say that all to say this. It is in his obedience to worship that he sees the revelation of the ram that is called, caught in the thicket. I'm going to say it again. It is in worship that he sees the revelation of the ram that is caught in the thicket, which was a type and a shadow of Jesus later being caught and having a crown of thorns on his head. That thicket around the ram's head was a type and a shadow of what was to come. And so my last, my last, I don't want to call it a challenge, but I just want to invite you in on these last few days of this fast is to spend some time in worship. Spend some time in worship. We all know the story of, of Jericho that Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. If you went to vacation Bible school, you sung the song and the walls came tumbling down. And we all know that they marched around the wall and they said nothing. And then on the seventh day, they marched around seven times and they gave a big shout. But I want to tell you, I submit to you that, that, the, that the revelation or the strategy that God gave to Joshua came as a result of of worship. There is always revelation that comes when you really truly worship. This week, these last few days of the fast. Oh wow. Uh Terry said she was just reading about the ram caught in the thicket this weekend. These last few days of the fast, I want you to pray, but I want you to worship. I want you to realize that you are standing on holy ground because what was getting ready to happen for Joshua and the children of Israel was something that had been prophesied over 400 years prior to them being there. And before they could fully take possession, Joshua had to fall on his knees and worship. You are standing on the precipice of walking into your prepared place. There is a prepared place. There is a prophesied place. There is a place that God has promised you and you before you enter, before you go into that place, God is asking for worship. Worship. It, it sounds simple. It's not going to make you run around. 
But what I'm telling you is going to happen when you begin to worship. I need you to worship God until you are out of yourself, that you are not thinking about your surroundings, that you're not thinking about your bills, that you're not thinking about whatever is on your mind. I need you to go into a closet. I need you to pray and then go into worship. And, and, and listen, I'm asking you to choose some worship that doesn't have words, because oftentimes when we hear music that has words, if you are a person that has to worship with music plan, when we hear music with words, our mind, our natural mind begins to sing these songs with the singer, even though our mouth is saying something. But I want you to get what's called soaking music, S-O-A-K-I-N-G. I I want you to find you some soaking music. I like Julie True. I like a lot of soaking artists, but I want you to get you some soaking music. And I want you to go before the Lord like you never have before and worship. I'm going to be real clear. Don't ask for anything. Don't ask for anything for anybody else. Just worship him. Let everything that comes out of your lips come from your heart and begin to just extol him. Begin to just worship you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, there is no other like you. Whatever words that begin to come up out of you, worship. Pray in the spirit if you have a prayer language and worship. I want you to worship until tears do fall coming down your eyes. I want you to worship until you get a revelation from God. I want you to worship until you forget where you are. I want you to to worship until you lose track of time. I want you to worship. Don't ask for anything. This is about God. This is about not about what you need. This is not about what anybody around you needs. This is not about that. I want you to worship. Thank you for the badge, uh, Wyndham Joseph. Thank you. I want you to worship. I want you to watch the supernatural exchange that when you worship and pour out on God, I want you to see the exchange that happens. It's in worship that you get beauty for ashes. It's in worship that you get the oil of joy for more. It is in worship that there is an exchange between you and God where you recklessly abandon you. Don't think about you, not what you need, not what you desire, not what you were hoping for, not what you've been praying for. I want you to spend time in worship. I want you to know that wherever that place is, that you go before him in worship, that take off your shoes because the place where you're standing is holy ground. It's holy ground. And it's the place that he's getting ready to speak to you like he's never spoken to you before. I want those tears to fall. Yes, Terry, because I want those tears to water your seed. I want those tears, your tears. I want it to water it. I I, I want those tears. I want you to worship. I want you to worship even if you're grieving. I want you to worship even if you lost your job. I want you to worship even if you feel sick in your body. I want everything that comes out of your mouth to be a praise and an adoration to God. I want you to open your mouth. I'm going to say it again. Don't ask for anything. Don't tell him that you're need anything. I want you to talk to him about how great he is. Talk to him about how good he is. Talk to him about how faithful he is. Talk to him about how he is the only God, our savior. Worship. Worship. Worthship, worship. How much is he worth? Worship. I want you to talk to him like he is the, the, the creator of the universe. I want you to talk to him like he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I want you to talk to him. I just want you to talk to him about him. God, I love you. God, I honor you. God, you are worthy. God, I worship you. God, we extol you. I, listen, th- this may sound crazy. If you think you're going to run out of words, get a good thesaurus. Just, it, just Google some sim- synonyms. Good. Everything good. Good. Great. Every synonym with great. Uh, everything majestic. Whatever you want to say that's talking about him. Worship. God, you are holy. God, you are a loving God. God, you are kind. You're a good, good father. Worship. These last few days, 
worship. And in your worship, God is going to give you a revelation of things to come. I need you to hear me. Now, now we're, we're somewhere else. In your worship, God is going to give you a revelation of things to come. Some of you are going to see things that you're going to ask, God, why did you allow me to see this? God, I can't, I, I don't, this is too much for me to bear. It's not too much. He's allowing you to see it because he's protecting you, that it will not catch you off guard. It will not catch you unawares. Some of you, he's going to show you people that he's going to assign you to pray for. Some of you, he's going to show you places that need prayer so that catastrophe does not happen. God is getting ready to download to you because you're getting ready to pour your love on him. Yeah, Brother er Errol, I hit that place last week. I said, Lord, these dreams are becoming more, they're longer, they're, they're more detailed, they're more specific. Wisdom is coming. Understanding is coming. The dreams are going to come at an accelerated rate and pace, and you're going to feel like that you can't keep up. And I'm telling you, and I got behind, so I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to walk you through this and walk with you. You're going to have to wake up sometime in the middle of the night when you don't have time to write it. You're going to have to get your phone out, hit that memo button and record what the dream is so that you will keep it because dreams are going to come so quickly that you are going to forget them because it's going to be too many. It's going to just be, it's feel like it's overwhelming, but when the dream comes, he's going to awaken you. And I need you to record it. And I need you to understand that he is getting ready to give some of you strategies for the days to come. And you are a people that the world will seek out for an answer. And they're going to wonder how you know that answer right off your head. It's because you spent these last Four days in worship. It's because you spent the last four days in his presence of reckless abandonment to who you are. No pride. No worry about your hair. No worry about your makeup. No worry about do they hear me in the other room? God is me and you. And I'm going to worship you like I've never worshiped before. I'm going to tap out of that soulish realm where I'm in my mind and I'm thinking and I'm really going to hit the spirit. I'm going to hit the vein of the spirit where there is a consistent flow of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. There is getting ready to be a consistent flow of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And they're going to look for you. And they're going to say something like, I don't even know why I came to you to ask you this. But something told me to find you, to ask you. Hallelujah. 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 The father seeketh such to worship him. The father seeketh such. He is looking for those who worship him. This worship is necessary before you go fight and conquer Jericho. This worship is necessary because you've already, Joshua, been leading these people through the wilderness. You've been given instruction after instruction. Joshua, you sat down. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here it is. Joshua, you've been leading the people. You've had the weight of the people on you, Joshua. Now you had to circumcise the people. You had to do things for the people that really should have been done for them in their childhood. And now, Joshua, you're having to circumcise grown men when they should have been cut when they were a child. Joshua, I know this has been a lot. I know I gave you the same honor that I gave Moses and I said the people were going to be with you. But Joshua, this you, you need this worship 
for you. This worship is not for the people. This worship is for you. This worship is what's going to keep you clean before me. It's going to keep you, keep your heart pure before me. This worship, Joshua, is where you're going to get up with all strength. You're going to get up really knowing who you are and whose you are. You're going to look at everything that you've accomplished now and know that that was just the beginning. You're getting ready to go and conquer all the territory because the wind of my glory is going to meet you in worship. Some of you, that spirit of heaviness that you war with, that you fight with uh, every now and then, it comes back. You think you got free and then it comes back again. It's going to leave in worship. In worship. <laughs> in worship. In worship. In worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Miss Kendall Lene. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up in the chatter, in the noise. These next few days, focus on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to try to close with this. Back in May of 2022, the Spirit of the Lord gave me three words, and I'm going to say them again because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But also it is proven that through repetition, information or words move from your conscious to your subconscious. Bless you, sis. Jamie Wright, bless you. And so I want to remind you what God said. And we have to understand that um, when God says the word season, it's not like we say season three months. That's a season. But I want to remind you that God said this is the season of recompense, repayment, and reward. It's going to look like it happened overnight. Even though you've been believing for years. Hallelujah. It's going to look like they were an overnight success. Even though you've been diligent for years. 
The wind of the spirit, the wind of the spirit is getting ready to blow you into another dimension in him. And as a result, there will be a natural, tangible manifestation that's proof that you've been with God. See, see away with there being no proof. Yeah, Brother Anthony, you missed it. There's going to be proof. There's going to be tangible proof. Hallelujah, that you've been with the Lord. Hallelujah. Recompense, repayment, and reward. These next four days of worship. This is the way I heard it. I don't, it doesn't sound spiritual, but this is how I heard it. These next four days of worship are going to seal the deal. You are walking into the promised land. It's up to you to possess it. Wow. Miami kids, and when he saw I posted that, that's what started him to follow me. Recompense, repayment, and reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will try to send out a reminder. I'll set it up tonight so it'll go out to remind you all that we have 6 a.m. prayer on Wednesday mornings. Um, it is a toll-free number that you can call. Hey, Elsa, we are wrapping up. Um, but I will send out the reminder through text messages for those of you who receive my text message alerts. Hey, Kenya, if you can, uh, if you have not, you can go in the link in my bio and it says text Elder Dobbins to connect and when it sends you to that text, just put in the initials CDM, which is Christy Dobbins Ministries. And once you send it, then you will be on the on the list and whatever we have going on. I know I sent out an alert this past Thursday and many of you jumped on when I was interviewed by uh, First Lady Leslie Muhammad um, on Thursday night and it was a really um, it was a really good interview. It was a good, rich time. If you go back, you can see it on her page. Her name is um, Leslie Bowles, Leslie underscore Bowles, B-O-L-E-S. But it was a good, um, a good interview. But I will, I want you to join us Wednesday morning for prayer. And again, I want to conclude Thursday evening with prayer. And I will, um, I, I do plan on jumping back on here a couple of days this week. Uh, she said, what is the topic tonight, y'all? What was the topic tonight? We ended on worship, but I don't know that that's the necessarily the topic, but we did. Uh, we ended on worship and the conclusion of our fast. Um, I do want to have a closing prayer with you all on Thursday evening. So I don't know if that will be me just going live or if I choose to put a Zoom link in my bio and everyone can just meet us, kind of where it's more intimate uh, and you can send prayer requests and I will have a few members of my team also praying with me on that call. I'm gonna jump on off. Uh, the, the presence of the Lord is weighty right now. I'm not gonna start prophesying and being on this, this, this live all night. Oh, please let me know. Please let me know. I will. I am at the Potter's house. I've been serving with my husband, but I may. I will make sure to come and meet you on Sunday. Please let me know. Just message me. Um, just DM me so I can know. Um, make sure that I see you on Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna get. Uh, I, I'm gonna post this though on YouTube in just a few minutes. It will be on YouTube. Hi, Brother Jose. Um, it will be on my YouTube, which is Christy Dobbins. If you have not, please subscribe to Christy Dobbins. Um, to those of you also who sent badges tonight, which is your way of sewing into this ministry, I thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, she said it's her first time online. 
Um, oh, hey, Jada. I miss you, Jada. Um, thank you for joining, Kenya. I will go live again a couple of nights this week. And I, I, I can't go live tomorrow because I speak at an event, depending on what time it's over, if I'm able to, to go live. Um, but I may mix it up and go live during the day. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but I want you all to spend these next days in worship. If you just got on, uh, this live isn't long like most of my lives really are. Um, the prayer call number is, if you sign up for my text, um, I'm not sure if it's Shana, Shania, that's what it is, Shania, um, I, I will send out an alert with that phone number. If you click the link in my bio when we get off, it will send you to put CDM, Christy Dobbins Ministry, that's the abbreviation, and um, you text it to me and I will send out the prayer call number. That is on a call on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Praise the Lord. Brother Jose is giving another praise report. We pray for his mother and she's doing great. That's a blessing to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Well, I thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'll see you all again, uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, but if not tomorrow, definitely on Tuesday. And so I love you all. Uh, Shania there, uh, Diana Book, well, Queen Two Brooks, <laughs> just put the, the conference call number if you want to get it. It's 951-981-7106. 951-981-7106. I will keep you in my prayers, Crystal. I will definitely keep you in my prayers. Love you, Jolly. Okay, you got it. All right, love y'all, love y'all. Have a good night. Love you, Miss New You. And I will post this on my YouTube. Um, blessings, Terry. I will post this on my YouTube in just a few minutes. God bless y'all. Have a good night.